Joining us now is former RNC chair and former Montana governor Mark Roscoe. He's one of three former GOP governors who filed a brief in support of Colorado's decision to remove Donald Trump from the 2024 ballot. Mr. Roscoe, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Trump called today's Supreme Court hearing a beautiful process and claimed his arguments were well received. Uh, what did you make of the hearing? Well, uh, it's a typical judicial hearing, it appeared to me. And Obviously, they have read briefs and gone over um, all of the topics for consideration, and there are a great many. And then they have ruminated about it and asking questions, I think, before they go to the process of making a final decision. So I uh, thought it was a fairly routine hearing. I don't think you can make much from the questions. I would suspect that um, whatever the former president uh, may have tried to surmise is a uh, pure speculation, maybe an effort to comfort himself. But at the end of the day, I've never found the um, questions from the Supreme Court necessarily indicate which direction the court was going. Uh, you want Trump disqualified. You say that he does not meet the qualifications. Based on what? Well, there are four qualifications. You know, first of all, Lindsay, nobody has a right to run. The fact is that um, we have a constitutional right to vote, but we don't have a right to run for office unless we meet qualifications. And that's virtually true for almost every position in America, whether it's a city council or it happens to be a Supreme Court justice or a president of the United States. And there are three in the Constitution as it was originally written, and those are an age requirement, 35, 14 years in the United States of America, native born. And then a fourth one added in 1868, and that one is the one under um, surveillance today by all of us uh, looking to see what might happen. So language is very simple. It's very unmistakable. And as a consequence, um, when you apply those four characteristics and the burden is on Mr. Trump here to prove that he meets all those uh, various different qualifications, not on the state to disprove it. It's on, on his, his burden to prove that, in fact, he's qualified. Colorado found him unqualified, and I think the proof was overwhelming after a very lengthy and detailed hearing. Now, while you say that you can't necessarily infer based on the Supreme Court justices' questions, it did seem that some of them expressed some skepticism through their questions that an individual state has the authority to deny a candidate from the ballot. Uh, to quote Justice Elena Kagan, uh, why should a single state have the ability to make this determination not only for their own citizens, but for the rest of the nation? How do you respond to that? Well, I would respond to that that the case that they have under consideration focuses upon Colorado. And as a matter of fact, um, I think that typically in a judicial proceeding, they're focused on just the question in front of them. And, you know, justices are just like every other human being. We've all had questions about, well, is it possible that this might happen or that might happen? And clearly, um, they are charged with the duty of making inquiry. But at the end of the day, this is not about Colorado determining what happens with the rest of the country. This is about whether or not the decision of the Colorado Supreme Court is going to be upheld by this court. Now, ABC polling last May reflected the public's erosion of trust. It showed 51 percent said politics, not the law, drive Supreme Court decisions. So with that, what do you say to voters who believe if Trump were to be removed, that it would be disenfranchising their right to decide the president for themselves? Well, what if Mr. Trump were 34 years old and he couldn't run and he was disqualified from running? Is that dis disenfranchising voters because he didn't live in the country for 14 years or he wasn't an 84 citizen? As a matter of fact, he pursued this particular line of attack with Barack Obama. So at the end of the day, it's pretty plain. And uh, frankly, I think uh, if you are really an originalist Supreme Court, and you believe in what it is that you say is a method of judicial interpretation, then you simply can't escape coming to the conclusion that, in fact, it applies in this instance. So we can ruminate and speculate about what will happen here or what will happen here or there. The question before the court was, is the Colorado Supreme Court correct in its interpretation of the Constitution, namely Amendment 14, Section 3? That's the only question. We will see how they answer it. Former Governor Mark Roscoe, we thank you so much for your time and insight. Thank you, thank you so much.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.